I had the occasion to meet Harry Parch when I recorded uh, Delusion of the Fury as one of the solo singers and he made a huge impression on me. He was such a rugged individual and his instruments were so endlessly fascinating. They looked beautiful, they sounded beautiful, um, they were sounds that I had never heard before. Uh, the cloud chamber, for example, are these incredible bowls that are hung on a, on a rack and they have a, a sound, an ethereal sound that's not like any other instrument that I've ever heard. They have a bell-like quality to them, but it's very pure and it's not a single pitch. It's more like a chord, a cluster of pitches. The kithara is an equally fascinating instrument. It's a string instrument and it's mounted on a wooden frame and it also plays chords but it has the ability to slide from one chord to another. Several of the hexads, their six note chords, uh, can slide up with a glass rod. So it has a very ancient sound to it. I guess you could compare it somewhat to a slide guitar, but it's not it's not exactly that sound. It has a very individual sound and Parch uses it to great effect. It's also a beautiful instrument to look at. The bass marimba is an instrument that has the quality of a marimba but it's much larger. It's not the deepest tone instrument that Parch has invented. He has something called the marimba eroica which is an enormous marimba that's played with either with gloves or with huge soft beaters. But the bass marimba is the next uh, instrument a little bit higher pitched than the marimba eroica and it also has this beautiful bass tone and because these large blocks of wood which are set above um, high resonators have such a natural and, and dark quality to them you can actually feel the notes um, not only hear them through your ears, but actually feel them through your bones or sometimes even through the floorboards. They're really very visceral kind of an instrument. The harmonic canon is a stringed instrument also, which has bridges that can be put um, underneath the strings in different places to get different tones on the left side of the bridge and on the right side of the bridge. It, it's extremely flexible. It has a lot of strings that can be played uh, in such a way that they make a chromatic scale which has 43 tones. Um, Parch had his own system of tuning which was based on the principles of acoustics, uh, just intonation as opposed to tempered intonation, which gives you, by the way, a lot more purity in consonances than we're accustomed to hearing in tempered uh, scale music. So because it's a 43 tone scale, when you hear what the equivalent would be of a, of a chromatic scale, you hear many, many more gradations of sound than you would on a, a, a normal keyboard instrument. So it's very fascinating to hear discrete pitches of each of these strings, but a lot smaller intervals than we're accustomed to hearing. The chromolodeon is a pump organ that has been re-imagined, um, redesigned, uh, to Parch's 43 note scale. And it has a sound of an organ, but it's tuned according to Parch's uh, 43 note tuning system. The diamond marimba is um, a very unusual shape, and the shape affords the player to play glissando like passages with either the right hand or the left hand, one of them giving you major uh, tonalities and the other minor tonalities. Because of the shape of the instrument, you can play glissandos that are infinitely faster than you could on a, a normal rimba. Some of these other instruments I, I saw in the parts studio, um, I haven't actually written for them, and that's a, kind of a different experience when you're writing for the instrument or just observing it. Um, the ones that I saw were the blowboy, the surrogate kithara, the gourd tree, and an extremely unusual looking instrument. Um, I kind of wish I did write for it, but the group that I'm writing There Isn't Time For in Los Angeles doesn't happen to have one of these, but it's got the very 
um, auspicious name Quadrangularis Reversus. And when you look at this instrument, it is so unusual and beautiful. It looks like something that came out of an Egyptian tomb. I wish I knew more about the way it sounds, but it, it sure looks great. Parch has another extraordinary instrument called the Spoils of War. And the reason for the name of this instrument is because he uses the metal shell casings as an instrument. It's a wonderful philosophical idea as well as a beautiful sound. I think that the value of Harry Parch's instruments lies not only in the music that he's written for it, but in the potential that it has for other composers. I found it to be very freeing in many ways because the sounds are so unusual. They don't sound like electronic instruments. They don't sound like any other uh, standard orchestral instruments. I think that the sounds themselves are very inspiring. And certainly I was inspired by hearing them and by seeing them, and I hope other composers will be as well.